Data management. This is a topic that's become really important over the last five to 10 years or so. So don't blow off this topic. This is hugely important. Well, what is data management? Well, there's really the three Ds of data management. It's all about the data that you collect, how you're going to store that, and how you're going to disseminate that. So a little bit of your research does cross into data management, but you don't want to lose that data. So how are you going to store it? How are you going to store it in a way that you can easily get it back if you need it? And then how are you going to get that out to the rest of the world? All of this is data management. and as I mentioned, this is becoming really, really important. And in fact, in a lot of proposals that college professors write, part of these proposals is a data management plan to ensure to the customer they're not going to lose the data, they're going to back it up, they're going to handle it, they're going to disseminate it. So how do we describe the data that we are going to collect? Well, there's a few things we need to think about. First, what is the purpose of the research? Are we going to build a device in the end? Are we going to solve a problem where we take a whole bunch of measurements? Are we going to study animals and collect data on that and have video? Uh, so what data is collected and in what format? Are these Excel files? Are these CFV files? Are these handwritten notes? Are these videos? Are these audio files or something else altogether? How much data is going to be collected? Is it many, many terabytes or just a few megabytes? Is the data going to change over time? So maybe it's the same measurements, but you're taking it maybe every month and it's a little bit different. And so now you can't just name it data file. You have to be, you have to call it something like data file with the date. And I don't recommend calling things just data file. They need to be a little bit more meaningful than that, but perhaps the date will become part of the file name. Are there multiple people or organizations collecting data? Because you'll need to assimilate that and also give them access to it. And if you have a large pool of people that need access to data, well, then there's always the chance that they're going to overwrite the data. Here's the classic one that happens to me. I'll create a template for something and I'll spend a lot of time doing the outline and the formatting and all the, and type in all the different questions that need to be answered. And a student will open that up and start typing and then save their document and they've completely erased my template and all of the comments I had in there. And one way you can handle that is through permission. So I only give students permission to copy files, read them, not to write. But large organizations, that starts becoming an issue. Who is responsible for the data management plan and in your research? So of archiving the data, getting it out there, managing that. I recommend having just one person responsible for that. Uh, multiple people, you could easily overwrite data because, oh, I thought you did that or I did that, but then so did I. So, but having one person in charge of that will avoid a lot of problems. Let's talk about some things that you need to consider that is going to determine how you organize and store that data. Uh, first of all, how are you going to document and organize the data? You need to have some kind of record of what data is there and some standards of how it's organized. Are you going to organize things by project or by date or both? Is the data you're collecting classified or protected in any way? Uh, if so, there may be legal requirements on how that data is stored and who can access it. Does your data entail metadata? So if you're taking photographs or capturing video or, or is there a date, time, location associated with that? How are you going to convey that when you store the data? Will that be in the file name or something else? What kind of file formats are you using? If they're proprietary, well, then other people can't read that and perhaps you need to provide some kind of utilities to translate that. Uh, standard file are usually best, but sometimes they're required to be proprietary. And then if it is proprietary and you need to pull up the data five, 10 years from now, well, do you still have the tools it takes to read that? Maybe proprietary things change over time and now the new software can't read the old files and, and all kinds of stuff like that, but something to think about. Definitely think about the directory file naming convention that you use. 
I like to name my files with capital letters if there's files within that. If it's sort of the final file and inside that is only documents, then I'll type in lowercase. That's my procedure. A lot of times I'll also follow things with dates or what project it's associated with along with a meaningful title. Uh, what about storage and backup procedures? Well, you need to define that and do it regularly. I recommend weekly backups uh, and maybe monthly comprehensive backups. Think about what tools and software you're gonna need to view and use the data, particularly if it's proprietary. And then how are you gonna prevent accidental deletion of data? A big thing there is permissions and also of course preventing hackers from getting in, but also think about preventing yourself from accidentally deleting things. How will you do that? File naming convention. Uh, it's important that you communicate with the team what your file naming convention is. If there's only one person working on a project, well, less need to communicate, but I would still pick a file naming convention. So here's one, and I tend to stick to things like this. I'll start the, pro the, the title with the project name, and this may be an abbreviated version or an acronym. Uh, I follow it by a meaningful title for the document. And again, I'll be usually be brief, and I'll provide a date. And then maybe there's some other thing here, like version one, version two, or if it's somebody else's file and then I edit it, I'll add a dash RR, those would be my initials, then they know, okay, that's version one and it's edited by me, and then followed by the file extension. Um, so for example, here's how I might name homework number one for this research methods class. So research methods, homework one, the date, and maybe it's version two, because I made some revisions. So some general guidelines for the file naming convention. You really want to identify everything that's important and then come up with some kind of standard file naming convention that includes all of this information. And you want to be very consistent with that. And I know halfway through the project, maybe you're going to change your mind because there's something else you want to record there. Um, you know, maybe you can change. I think you can change much more easily if you're adding information. But if you're gonna do a radical jump, well, that's maybe harder to do. So consider staying consistent for the duration of the project. I also recommend using an underscore instead of a space. Um, a lot of times there's tools that just don't handle spaces well. And so if you use underscores, it still looks like a space to our eyes, but you avoid those types of problems. You'll also notice that the file names are getting long. As time goes on, this is less and less of an issue, but years ago, um, that was very often a problem where if file names were too long, it would just drop things. And this might read research methods, homework, dot docx, and not record anything else. Um, so be wary of your tools, the types of characters, and the length of file names that it can handle. Storage and backups. I recommend doing some sort of backup at least weekly. I'm a fan of the type of backups that's more like a synchronization. It'll keep a version of your files and it will just back up things that have changed. Because if it backs up everything, you're, you're taking up more memory than you'd have to. And I like that for weekly. And then think about monthly or bi-monthly, like full, full up backups. And if you do that, really the worst thing that can happen if you really mess something up is you lose a week's worth of work. Now that can be horrible, particularly if it was a productive week, but that's better than losing you know, years and years of work, which has actually happened to me. Another very, very useful thing to do is, is limiting access and permissions. And this isn't so much you're not allowed to touch this, you know, let people so they can read files, so they can copy things out, and then they don't accidentally start typing over top or delete things. Um, include redundancy in your backup. Like don't just back up to one place. If you have drives on a computer, consider a RAID system where it's actually using multiple drives as sort of one big drive, but if one breaks, you can still get your data back. And also these backups should absolutely be both off-site and off-network. So they cannot be on your same network or on your same site because if a cyber attack happens, then your backup is going to get attacked just the same. At my university, we had a Ryuk attack and I was promised by our IT department that our backups were both off-site and off-network. That was years before the attack. 
when the attack happened, come to find out, our backups were both on site and on network, and they were also encrypted. And I literally lost 10 years of my career down the drain that I couldn't get back. And I was backing things up, but they were backing them up for me. Um, I now do my own backups and I don't trust them. So uh, <laughs> be cautious of who is doing your backups. Make sure you, you trust them and question them two, three times. Are these off site? Are these off network? And ask them questions about that. Uh, and don't just trust what they're saying necessarily. You'll definitely need to think about how and who is accessing the data. So what of the data you collect will be shared? If you're doing tests with human subjects, for example, you'll probably have to keep the majority of that private forever and only release you know, anonymous conclusions from that. When's the data going to be shared? Maybe at the end of the month, you have to publish a customer report, so you're sharing monthly. If intellectual property is developed, that's this acronym IP here. Uh, that's like patents and trademarks and things like that. Well, then you might need to hold on to data longer in order for, you know, maybe a provisional patent or a full utility patent to get filed before you release that. So you may have to limit access so nobody can get to that because if documents become public, that's considered the disclosure and that can interfere with filing for intellectual property. Uh, if you're writing publications, you may need to verify with your customer that you have permission to publish. That's very common, particularly in research involving Department of Defense. Uh, if it's just a company sponsoring your research, well, they might wanna keep things private for a bit in order to file for intellectual property. So think about that. And there may be multiple reasons for when you share things, whether it's from you or from your customer. How's the data going to be shared? Are you going to share the raw data, make that available for download, or are you just sharing the data through publications or presentations? Who's the data going to be shared with? And that's important, particularly for you know patents, intellectual property, or licensing restrictions, because then you can't just share it to everybody. If you share it with the world, that's a public disclosure, and that can cause problems with intellectual property. Um, some countries there may be embargoes against, and you're just not allowed to share any data with them. You might try to think, are there any privacy, ethical, or confidentiality concerns? For example, maybe you have a bunch of students' grades. Uh, that's a highly private thing, and you can absolutely not share that at any time. You're only really allowed to share a student's grade with that student, and that's about all. So think about that. Who holds the intellectual property rights to the data? And if you look at a patent, the inventor does not own the patent. In fact, the inventor is really just there for a pat on the back. It's the assignee. So if you're doing anything involving intellectual property, you absolutely have to find out who the assignee is and obtain permissions from them to release data. You can't ask the inventor unless the inventor happens to also be the assignee. Is the data open source? Um, are people around to just reuse that? And you might need to make that clear on your website if you have things available for download. I was back and forth and in including this slide here, but some people do confuse data management versus project management. And the simplest way to think about this, project management is all about how that data is going to be generated, how you will do your research. Data management is, okay, there's the data. How are you going to collect it, store it, and disseminate it? So project management, collecting the data, data management, storing and disseminating the data. Uh, I don't need to go in too much more detail about this. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there's a lot of government agencies, uh, National Science Foundation, a big one, that are now requiring sections in a proposal to talk specifically about data management plans or DMPs. And I think they're just used to supporting research and then the data is gone and lost and that becomes a waste to the government. And so here's a typical flow that somebody might include in their data management plan. And uh, let's say it starts here in the upper right. And the first thing we're doing is the project description. And we're trying to figure out at this point, what types of data are needed for this project? Then you get into, okay, how will that data be collected and 
Uh, in what format will that be? What type of metadata along with that? Do we want to record the date or where that was taken or other documentation associated with the actual data? Then we need to think about legal issues. Is any of the data private? Is, has any of the data been licensed or any of the data generated from stuff that was licensed? Do you need consent to release any of that data or any kind of restrictions at all? Uh, it's really important that data is not released to improper people. Then we need to think about data curation. So this is the, the format of the data. If any data is in a proprietary format, how will others get that? Maybe you should probably along with the data then keep the utilities to translate that data. And then finally, the storage, like what type of storage mechanisms are you gonna use? The file naming conventions, your backups, all those types of things.